Hi. My name oh, yeah. is Kate Lynch and I'm a ELC assistant principal at TISA, which is in Baku, Azerbaijan. And I have with me here, Carolina, who is one of our teachers. Carolina, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, my name is Carolina Camero. I am from Colombia and I have been teaching uh, in TISA for seven years. This is my seventh year and five of those. This is my fifth one here in the Early Learning Center. Fantastic. Carolina teaches our four-year-olds, which we call P2 at TISA. And I also have with me our EdTech coordinator, Chris. Chris, would you like to introduce yourself? Thanks, Kate. Hi, everyone. My name's Chris Tweedy. I'm in my fifth year at TISA. been teaching a couple more years than that, though. Um, and I'm my role at the moment is I'm the educational technology coordinator for primary, so I get to work with everybody. Students, teachers, parents, everybody. Thank you. Fantastic. So we wanted to take the opportunity to show and share with you a really inspiring um, project that happened in Carolina's class. And that was a result of Carolina really paying attention to what the students were interested in and noticing. So this is a, a, an example of a very student led inquiry. So Carolina, I was wondering if you wanted to tell us a little bit of the background um, of what led to this inquiry getting launched in your class. And you can tell us a little bit about the process. And as you do, I can happily skip through the slides at your request. Over to okay, you, Carolina. Thank you. thank you, Kate. Um, thank you very much for thinking of my project. Uh, it, well, it started basically at the beginning of the year uh, when we started going to the forest that we have right here next to the next to the classroom and looking for some materials, natural materials to bring into our classroom and doing some noticings around. So children brought shells and rocks and twigs and leaves and different things that we, we brought back to the classroom and started to, to sort them. It was kind of like the idea was to do like a mathematical investigation from those materials. So looking into sorting, you can see the kids in the photos as you go, maybe the first couple of, yeah, those, those pictures when we brought back the materials, we're looking at them, uh, kind of describing them and then uh, sorting them. And um, then as part of the sorting and everything, after I washed all the shells before we were going to use them on a daily basis in our class, um, after a few days of that, we noticed that uh, there was a shell on the wall one day. So we thought, oh, maybe this is a, um, a real snail living in that shell still. And he's now on the wall. But at that moment, uh, the kids didn't really pay so much attention to it. So we just kept going. Then we noticed that the shell appeared in another place. So um, then we started to kind of like uh, talking about it. We kind of had the idea of, keeping track of where the snail was going with a piece of yarn. So um, we were taking the yarn to all the places where the snail was appearing. Uh, and that's kind of like that uh, awakened the, the interest in the, awoken the children, the children's interest in the snail. It was all driven by their, what, by what they wanted to do. They wanted to, they start wanting to, um, write stories for the snail for bedtime stories for it so in the night when the snail was on his own he would have some stories to read and all this was coming from the children so there's different videos different photos um different notes different pictures that the kids were so inspired to draw pictures for this snail a bed a toilet uh, different things so it was really exciting to see yeah, how i have to project here <laughs> And I, I, cause I was lucky enough to be able to come into the classroom, you know, and when this was really going on and the buzz was happening and, and a lot of people around the school even started coming up out of curiosity. It was like, what is happening in Carolina's class? I mean, you, you went over very quickly about the thread tracking the snail. You would go into the classroom and there was this wool like stretched across, you know, all around the room tracking where the snail had been. And it was this complex, you know, I mean, it gave detectives a run for their money in, in a good crime show. It was like, it was proper tracking. And then, and then when they moved into this phase of the, of creating notes and stories, you know, they were, the, the kids were so invested and it was really a, an incredible inquiry. Uh, we won't go further into the whole process because the slideshow in itself tells the story, but that was really great to hear the background a bit. Maybe Caroline, you can tell us a tiny bit um, 
about what areas of the curriculum, you know, even though you were following completely their lead, what areas of core curriculum or any other curriculum areas do you think that this, this inquiry really supported? Uh, so I think um, literacy was one of them. The kids were very excited. They were writing notes, they were writing letters, they were making books about the whole thing that was happening. We had a display board ready for the kids to put their notes, put their pictures, put their books. Um, and that was really, really nice to see that uh, the snail was inspired and what was happening with the snail was inspiring to them to create books. Then also, I think uh, a little bit of science, really, we were uh, digging a little bit into uh, how snails live and what do they eat and and what do they need to live in a in a in a not in not when they are outside in a garden but when they are inside what do they need to live so a little bit of science a little bit of of literacy as well lots of literacy actually and also when we were deciding on the name of the snail then we looked a little bit at um, data handling and with tally charts and we looked at tally marks and voted the kids voted for a name uh, they drew pictures a lot of art and fine motor skills development coloring beautiful pictures and and notes and uh we even in our physical development uh p lessons we looked at snail movements and how does a snail move um so it, i kind of tried to bring everything in but of course driven by what the kids were saying because when we were talking about the the, the parts of the snail and they, some of them were saying that it had nail it had uh, legs some other children were saying that they don't have legs so i was like okay so how does this nail move so they were showing the movements and they were so excited showing all this so it was very easy to follow them and i just tried to bring in as i could the different areas of the curriculum so quite a few areas we were able to to, to look at it sounds like it sounds like you cut a lot of areas of the curriculum. I mean, really, you could say that it was covering all, all the core areas and, and, and even other areas. And then in regards to, because we're an IB school following the, the PYP curriculum, in regards to your current unit of inquiry at the time, I do believe the unit of inquiry was around stories and storytelling and you were looking into fiction stories and non-fiction stories. So and even though this had happened out of student initiative and out of you being careful to notice what was happening around you and what was interesting the children, you could find a way to tie it into the actual unit of inquiry at the time. Is that right? Yes, that's completely right, Kate. Uh, it's it. The whole, the, the biggest part of it started happening when we started our stories unit. So actually, it came from the kids. They said, "Oh, we can write a story about that." Because I was going to document it just as, as a simple thing in the classroom. But then the kids had the idea of writing a story out of what was happening. So I said, well, this is a great idea. So then we just started to do it. And as I was doing the slide, I was showing them to the children and the children were look, was looking at them and having their opinions and giving some more ideas and what else can we do? So it was so really- So they literally, they literally helped to co-construct this documentation. And, and that, this, this was them taking action on the unit of inquiry because they're the ones that came up with the idea to make a story but at the same time it landed itself to one of your professional goals because you really extended yourself with this documentation one thing that can't be seen here in the video is there's so many links embedded into the slideshow there's little videos that show the rich scientific discussions or other kind of discussions happening problem solving so you you really got to sort of explore your own um goal of, of extending your your documentation style as well at the same time is that right yeah yeah that's correct that that was part of my inspirations to do this as well was to to continue to develop my 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 uh, documentation uh, of the children's learning which is something that i i am passionate about so it was a great opportunity to do so one of the things that i really noticed throughout the process was the fact that um this was really organic generated from the students but the um approaches to learning and how they just organically also came from that like the thing that I've noticed is um, the really rich research questions that children came up from from being encouraged to wonder and what's happening here and the, the rich modeling that was going on as well it was a it was a great process so thank you so much for that um, Carolina and this amazing documentation <laughs> it was a real a real pleasure to to do it and to work with it along with the kids and the final thing was that they were so excited to share it with the parents. Um, so that's how we used Total to, to, to share it. And it was, it was great to see some of the parents' comments and they 
some of them didn't comment on the on the actual total but they came to the door and they were like really really excited with the learning that had been going on and and it was good it was a good tool to share with families